previously on Handy Dad TV. And what I do is I take out my SD card and I pop it in this little reader here and then I plug it in here. It automatically erases all my files from the card after it copies them over successfully. Those original files are now on my NAS, but there's two copies of them, so they are redundantly stored. Wow, those two statements generated a ton of feedback. You are trusting the NAS not to mess up right after copying the files. Don't format the card until the NAS backs up. RAID is not a backup. And it does nothing to prevent accidental deletion. It's important to keep two copies of important data, either to another unit or to a cloud storage provider. Okay, I get it. I replied to all those comments and assured everyone to rest easy because yes indeed, I do back up my NAS. And I promised to make this video to explain how. So let's get to it. I'm going to start by explaining the options that my Synology NAS makes available to me. You'll find time codes in the video description if you want to skip right ahead to my backup strategy. I'm logged into my Synology DS923, and if I open the Package Center and search for Backup, you can see it finds two installed packages, Glacier Backup and Hyper Backup, plus a ton of other related packages. I don't currently use Glacier Backup, which is used for backing up to a specific type of Amazon storage called S3 buckets. Now the easiest backup package is called USB Copy, which incidentally is the same utility that started all the controversy when I used it to copy my files from the camera's SD card to the NAS in the previous video. As the name implies, this is just a simple file copy, not much different than dragging and dropping files to a jump drive but it has the benefit of being repeatable and scheduled if you want. The most flexible option is the package called Hyper Backup, which backs up incremental changes and stores multiple versions of your files over time. This method starts with an initial full backup and then only records the changes since the last backup. This is the same method used by Time Machine, which is a built-in backup application on all Mac computers. Hyper Backup supports a number of backup destinations, whether they be locally attached hard drives, tons of cloud providers, or another NAS. The best practice for backing up your important data is called the 3 to one Backup Rule. That says you want to keep at least three copies of your data on two different storage media and one of them off-site. Well, I stand by my statement that the NAS is really holding two copies of every file because it protects against physical disk drive failure, which is the most likely risk. But that's two copies on the same media. So at a minimum, you need to back up your files to something else like an external hard drive. So my NAS is kept in this computer armoire here. That's where I have my printer and just a whole bunch of storage. But down the bottom here is where I keep the NAS. And you can see it is a ventilated cabinet. I do have a vent fan back there. And this is how I conduct my, I'll call it my on-site backup. So I have this external hard drive here that has just a, a USB 3 cable coming from the front of the NAS. And the power is connected to, I have a UPS back there to, to uh, protect the NAS. So that's how I have power this as well. And when I'm done with it, I can just disconnect it and store it. Now the best thing to do is to take this and just give it to a neighbor or you know a family member, something like that, so that it is off-site out of your house. The next best thing is to actually take it and just put it in a fire safe. And close that up in the fire safe, and at least that provides some protection. It's better than nothing. The only downside to backing up to an external hard drive, assuming you disconnect it and store it somewhere safe, is that you can't automate it you need to do it. If you want to automate your backups, you're left with either paying a cloud service or buying a second NAS. I knew there was a risk by keeping my external hard drive in a fire safe, so I also used Google Drive for a while to hold my really important, irreplaceable family memories. The benefit of upgrading your NAS, assuming the old NAS is still functional, is that you can use the old NAS as a backup destination. After I upgraded to the DS923, I copied all my data off the old DS918 and I installed Hyper Backup Vault on it so that I could use it as a backup destination. I ran the initial backup while they were connected together on my home network. Then I moved the old NAS to my daughter's house 10 miles away and now it qualifies as an off-site backup. 
the DS923 automatically does nightly backups to the DS918, and I don't have to pay any cloud storage fees. There's an enhanced practice with respect to the 321 backup rule that goes by 32110, which sounds more like a safe combination. In addition to three copies on two different media with one off-site, the enhanced method says one copy should be kept offline and there should be no errors after backup recoverability is verified. Thankfully, Hyper Backup takes care of the recoverability verification, but since both of my NASs are connected devices, they're both subject to viruses and other attacks like ransomware. For the offline copy, I still do monthly backups to that external hard drive and keep it in the fire safe. This isn't a totally risk-free scheme, however. Remember that viewer comment, You are trusting the NAS not to mess up right after copying the files. Yes, that is true. If the NAS were to have a catastrophic failure between the time that I import new footage and the time that it performs that nightly backup, I would lose that day's footage. I could mitigate that risk by leaving the files on the SD card and getting into the habit of deleting files right before my next shoot. Fortunately, I can easily recreate my footage if I lose anything. But it's something to consider if you are recording once-in-a-lifetime events like weddings. So how do you back up your NAS? Please leave me a comment and let me know. Thanks. If you are a DIY video creator struggling to find an audience, join Handy Dad TV and get instant access to an established audience that will provide more views and income than you're getting on your own. Just go to handydad.tv slash join for more information.